Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to connect to Microsoft SQL Server using DBForge Studio. So I will show you how to create databases and tables and how to run SQL queries. So DBForge Studio is a powerful integrated development environment for SQL Server management, administration, development, data reporting and analysis. It is an excellent alternative to Microsoft SSMS and it is developed by DevArt. So it has many advanced features which are listed on the website of DevArt and it is available in free and paid versions. So we have the Express Edition which is a free version and we have Enterprise, Professional and Standard Editions which have more features and which are paid versions. Now I will show you how to download and install DBForge Studio. As I said, DBForge is developed by DevArt, so here we have to type DevArt. Then we have to go to this first link, it is on devart.com. In this page we have to click on database tools. So here we are on the page of DBForge. So let's scroll down. And we can see that DBForge Studio can be used with SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle and PostgreSQL. In our case, I will show you how to use DBForge with SQL Server. So let's click on SQL Server. Now in this page we have to scroll down and here we can see DBForge Studio. To download it, we have to click on this download button. So here we can see that it has many features, it has SQL coding assistance, source control, table designer, database designer and much more. So to download DBForge Studio we have to click on this download button. In this page we can click on features to have more information about the available features. We can also click on additions to see the available editions. So in this page we have the different editions of DBForge. We have the Enterprise Edition which has all the features. We have the Professional Edition with advanced features. We have the Standard Edition with the essential features and also we have the Express Edition which is a free version of DBForge Studio. Also in this page we have a comparison between the different versions. So in this video I will show you how to download and install DBForge Studio. So let's click on this download button. Then here we will download DBForge Studio for SQL Server. So we will download version 6.2 and we will download the Enterprise Edition. So we will use the Enterprise Edition for free during the trial period. After the trial period we have either to buy the license or DBForge Studio will switch automatically to the Express Edition which is a free version. Now to download it we have to click on this button. And here we have to register. In my case I have already created an account so I will click on sign in. Then let's click on sign in. Now to download DBForge Studio, let's click on this download button. So here we need to save this installer. In my case I have already downloaded it, so I will cancel this download. You can find the direct link to this download page in the description of this video. So this is the installer of DBForge Studio, let's run it. Let's click on run. Then let's click on install. So it will be installed at this location. Now let's click on next. Then here you can check or uncheck the boxes that you want. In my case I will uncheck all the boxes. Then let's click on next. Then here you can select the option that you prefer. In my case I will select the third option. Then let's click on next. Now the installation finished correctly. So here we can uncheck this box, then let's click on finish. 
So this is the installer that we use to install DBForge and this is the shortcut that allows us to start DBForge. So for the moment we don't need the installer anymore so we can delete it. Now let's start DBForge using this shortcut. Then in this window we can create a new connection to SQL Server. So we can close this window and we can open it again using this button. So this button allows us to create a new connection. So here we have to provide the server name. In my case the server is installed on my computer so I can write localhost or dot. Then slash. Then I have to provide the instance name. So in my case the instance name is SQL Express. So to find the instance name, we can start the services application. So here we have to write services.msc. It is also possible to run this application from Windows PowerShell. Now let's click on OK. Then in this window, we have to find SQL Server. So here we have SQL Server and between parentheses we have the instance name which is SQL Express. Then we have to select the authentication method. In my case I am using Windows Authentication. And then we can select the database from this list. So these are the available databases. In my case I don't like to select any database because I want to create a new one. Now let's click on connect. So these are the available databases and to create a new database we have to make a right click on the connection name. Then new database. So I will create a new database called best shop. Then let's click on apply changes. Now the database has been created correctly so we can close this page. And to find the new database we have to refresh the connection. So let's make a right click. Then refresh. And here we have our new database. So we can expand it. Then we can expand tables. So for the moment we don't have any table. And to create a new table we have to make a right click on tables. Then new table. So here let's create a new table called clients. Then let's create the different columns. So the first column is called ID. And it is the primary key. So let's check this box. So it is of type integer. It should not be null. And it is auto incremental. Now let's create the next column. Let's call it first name. It is of type varcar, we can change the size. So here let's write 60 instead of 50. So it should not be null, so let's check this box. And let's create the next column, let's call it last name. It is of type varcar, we can change the size. And it should not be null. Let's create another row. Let's call it email. It is of type varcar. Let's change the size. Let's write 150. And it should not be null. Also, it should be unique. So we can add the unique keyword in this place. Now let's add another row. Let's call it created at. So it is of type date time. So here we have to select date time. And it should not be null. And also I want to give it a default value, which is the current timestamp. So here in the default column, I will write current timestamp. Let's press enter. So we can see that current timestamp has been added here. Now to create this table, we have to click on this button, Apply Changes. So now the table has been created, we can close this page. And here to find the table, we have to refresh the connection. 
So here we can see that we have this new table. So for the moment, this table is empty. And to add some data into this table, we have to make a right click. Then edit table. Then we have to go to data. And here we have to change the access mode. Let's select the name of the table. And now we can use this plus button to add new rows. So we don't need to add the ID because it is auto incremental. We have to provide the first name, the last name and the email. Also, we don't need to provide the created at value because it has a default value. So let's provide the first row. Now to add this row, we can press anywhere. And now we can see that the created at has a value. We can also increase the width of the columns. Now let's add more rows, so we can use this plus button. We can also update the data. So for example, let's update the email address. So we have to make double click. Then we can change the value of the address. Let's press enter. And now the data has been saved. Now to delete a row from the table, we have to select it. Then we have to click on this minus button. So we have to confirm. And as we can see, row number three has been deleted. So to run SQL queries on the table data, we have to open the SQL editor. So we have to make a right click on the database name, then new SQL. Then here we can write the SQL query that we want to execute. So for example, let's run the SQL query that allows us to check the database which is currently selected. So we have to write select DB name. To run this query, we have to make a right click then execute so here we can see that this database is currently selected now let's write the sql query that allows us to read the data from the client's table so to run this query we have to make a right click then execute and here we can see that we have four rows. Now we can select the ID, the first name and the email columns. So here let's delete star and let's write ID, first name and email. We can also add a condition. So here the condition is ID greater than two. Now let's run this query. So here we can see that we have two rows and we have three columns. We can also create more tables using the SQL editor. So let's delete this query. And let's write the queries that allow us to create new tables. So the first query allows us to create the products table and the second query allows us to create the messages table. Now let's run these two queries. So we can see that the queries have been executed correctly and to find the tables, we have to refresh the connection. And here we can see that we have two more tables. So we can delete a table from the Explorer. So for example, let's delete the messages table. So we have to make a right click, then delete. Let's confirm. And we can see that the table has been deleted. We can also delete a database from this explorer. For example, let's delete this database. So let's make a right click on it, then delete. Let's confirm. And we can see that the database has been deleted. 
We can also update the connection property. So let's make a right click on the connection name, then modify connection, and let's select a database. So let's select best shop, then let's click on connect. So now we are connected to best shop. So we can find the connection string that allows any programming language to connect to this database. To do this, we have to make a right click, then properties. So here we have the connection string. We can copy it and we can use it with any programming language. Finally, to close a connection, we have to select it. Then we can click on this button, close connection. We can also make a right click, then close. And to open the connection, we have to select it and we can click on this button, open connection. We can also make a right click, then open. 